Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Take 5. My name is Calvin Friend, one of the volunteers at River of Life, and just thankful to have you here today to reflect on God's Word and on the life and the world around us. I was drawn to Psalm 29 this morning, and I'm going to read it for you. Just let it wash over you. I remember from years ago, uh, my pastor talked about it being the Psalm of Seven Thunders or the Song of Seven Thunders. So every time the voice of the Lord is mentioned, it's another one of the thunders and, and just a it's, it's an amazing psalm. So you can count them if you want to. There's seven of them. And I have two thoughts or questions that I wanted to share with you uh, based on this. Oh, and, and one more thing. The word ascribe, uh, it's, it's kind of like writing down, but it means to attribute, to say this is a characteristic of. All right. So Psalm 29, a psalm of David. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon to skip like a calf, an entire nation, skipping like a calf, and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forests bare. And in his temple, all cry glory. The Lord, in sit, the Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. And one of the first things that jumped out to me, and I thought, huh, <laughs> was from the very first verse. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. And what struck me about that was, this is David, a human, saying to the heavenly beings, this is what you need to attribute to God. And I thought, David, who in the world are you? that you would think that you have the right to say that to heavenly beings. Who in the world are you that you think that you need to speak that to the heavenly beings? I mean, they live in it. They live surrounded by God's glory. Why in the world would you think that you need to remind them of God's glory? Is it because they live in the heavens and so they're not here on the earth and all this is about you know what happens to the earth and to the nations of the earth when you speak of god's glory or when the voice of the lord speaks is it because they're so far removed that you think you have to tell them to attribute this to god you think that maybe um, familiarity breeds contempt, and so they're just so surrounded by God's glory all the time that perhaps they forget to notice, and so you need to remind them now, attribute this to God, talk about his glory, talk about his majesty, talk about his power, remind yourself of who he is. And then I think, well, wait a minute, we live here on earth, and Scripture also tells us that the heavens declare the glory of God, that the earth displays his majesty, that it's all around us. And I think sometimes we forget as well who God is, that just his voice can strip forests bare. His voice shakes the mountains, that his voice um, causes um, uh, nations to skip along. That it's just the sound of his voice causes deer to give birth. They're like, whoa, that's the God that we worship. And so we're told to attribute these things to him or the, 
the um, heavenly beings are. And so right from the very beginning, it made me go, wait, wait a minute, what in the world is going on with this psalm and the song of seven thunders speaking out the glory of God? And then also from the end, uh, verse 11, may the Lord give strength to his people. I mean, this one who speaks and it just thunders, his voice just thunders, may he give strength to his people. But then also, may the Lord bless his people with peace. You know, it's, it's this psalm that just speaks about, wow, the majesty, the glory, the power of God, and how it just can, his voice can devastate the earth. And then that his people would have peace, knowing that his voice speaks on our behalf, his voice speaks and brings uh, strength to us. His voice string, speaks and protects us. And so he closes out with that hope for peace. And my hope for each one of us today is that we would be able to hear the thundering voice of God, that we would be reminded of who it is that we worship and that knowing that, we would have peace. Mighty God, Heavenly Father, may you give strength to your people, and may you give peace to your people. As you remind us of who you are and what you can accomplish, remind us of your glory throughout the day. Show us. It doesn't sound like we're going to have storms, but show us your glory. Show us your strength. Remind us who you are and let us rest in being your people. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. So, have a great day. It's supposed to be a glorious day out there. And even though we are just surrounded by God's glory all the time and we don't always notice it, maybe today is the day that we go outside and we notice the glory of God, and we are encouraged by that. So have a great day, everybody.